I know a lot of you out there have been having a little bit of trouble setting up Facebook ads, custom domains, and adding new conversion events to prepare for the iOS 14 change. And I know specifically there's been a big issue with getting your pixel set up and adding those conversion events once all your domain and everything have been added to the Facebook ad platform. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to get that pixel set up on Facebook and make sure you can add conversion events for your ads. What's up guys, it's Tom. Welcome back to the lab and welcome back to my life. A few weeks back, I posted a video about how to add your own custom domain and get it verified so that you can come up to speed for all the changes with Facebook ads that are happening as a result of iOS 14. And in the comments on that video, uh, there was a problem that I didn't foresee that a lot of you ran into, which is when you added the custom domain and then you went to select your pixel so that you could add the conversion events, your pixel was grayed out. And so you couldn't actually add the conversion events. Well, I've figured out the solution, as many of you know, in the replies to those comments. And so today I'm gonna make a video walkthrough about how to ungray the pixel, make sure that it is correctly added, and then correctly add your conversion events so that you can get back to work running your ads. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first place we're gonna start is here in the Facebook Business Manager. Now I'm on the home page here, so I'm gonna to go to the top uh, nine dots here, and I'm gonna select the Events Manager. You can also select it from the side on the left uh, column there. So we're gonna to go to the Events Manager, and this is where we're gonna create a new pixel to use for our ads. Or in some cases, you can just select the pixel that you already have. In this case, I've got my pixel here that I'm using. And if I go to aggregated event measurement, and we go to configure web events, this is my domain that I'm using. You can see it's verified. Everything's already set up on my end. If I go to manage events here, edit, I can go to add an event here, and then I can select a pixel or custom conversion event. And so you can see that my pixel, Tom Dupree the Third's pixel is available. I can use that and I can add events to it. Uh, that are all available here. Now, what if you don't have that? Let's go to cancel and we'll go back to data sources here. And we'll look at all the pixels I have. So we're gonna go to this test pixel that I have set up here. If I go to continue pixel setup, you can see that I have a couple options for how I can set this up. I can add it to a website or uh, use the conversions API or what have you. We'll X out of that. And what we'll do is just to show you that it's not available, if I go back to my pixel, Go back to aggregated event measurement, back to web events. Sorry if I'm flying through this, by the way. <laughs> uh, go to my domain, manage events. And once we've clicked edit, you can see from the drop down here that this test pixel is not available. So it's grayed out, I can't select it, and it says no web event to select in this pixel. Basically what this means is that Facebook has not received any pixel data from this pixel coming back into Facebook, so it's not active. So we have to activate it. If I go back to data sources, and I go to this test pixel, I'm gonna go all the way over to settings. And here I've got my pixel ID. So I can click that and I can copy that to the clipboard. Now the tool I recommend using is Toned In for this. So if you follow the channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Toned In. If you don't, no you do. Go to ToneedIn.io, sign up for an account if you don't have one, log in, all that. And you'll end up here at kind of the main interface uh, menu, which is your calendar and then your dashboard that pops up and things like that. So if you go to the left side here to this little chain icon, this is where you can create a smart link. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna create a smart link. So we're gonna go up to the top right. We're gonna click create new link campaign. And once we're here, we're gonna go for a music link. We'll do music link, existing release. And now we need to drop in the link for our song. So I'm just gonna paste in the link for my latest release holding on. And we're gonna click create link. And this is gonna automatically, if, you, if you've never used Tonebin before, this is gonna, gonna automatically populate some stuff. You'll be able to create a link pretty easily. You can customize a fair portion of it uh, with the free plan. And it's really easy to set up and get going with a custom landing page that looks great and loads fast and will allow you to do basically all the things. Now, once we're to the next spot here, we're just gonna leave Spotify active. Uh, we're not gonna add any other services to the landing page. As a general rule of thumb, this is not what this video is about, but less options are better on a landing page. So going forward, here we've got, everything's kind of set up how we want it to be. Uh, toned in does all this automatically. So we're gonna just gonna go to continue through the next step. I'm gonna remove this link here 
because I don't want people listening on the landing page. I want them listening on Spotify. So we're going to remove the preview, click continue. This all looks good. Now we're going to add our custom domain, which I've got another video that you can check out here on how to connect your own domain to Toned In. If you haven't watched that yet, definitely go check that out after this one. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to select go.tomdupree the third. We're going to have a custom URL here. So we're going to do holding on test. This is our domain for the landing page that we're going to use. And then we're going to click continue. And here's where we add our Facebook pixel. So if we go back to Facebook, we go to the pixel ID for our test pixel here, copy to clipboard. We go back to toned in. This Facebook pixel field for you is likely to be blank. So you're going to command V, drop that in. And now our new pixel or our existing pixel that's not available according to Facebook is on this landing page. So don't worry about all the other ones. I've got a bunch of other uh, tracking data in there. Please don't steal it. <laughs> so we're going to continue on. And now we're going to name this campaign holding on test. And we're not going to add any tags. We're going to click create link. Cool. So now we've made a custom landing page that has our custom domain on it and our pixel embedded into it. So now we can use this landing page to send pixel data back to Facebook and basically activate that pixel for us. And once our landing page has been created, we can click view landing page and see what we're working with. And this is it. Piece of cake, easy setup, new landing page for holding on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the landing page kind of editor thing, and we're going to copy the link for the landing page. We're going to go back to Facebook. We're going to go to the test events tab here in the event manager. And this is where we're going to send pixel data from this new landing page back to Facebook so that we can ungray out that pixel as a selection in the drop down menu. So here we'll enter our website URL, drop that in, paste it, and we're going to open the website. Now, one thing to note here if you do have an ad blocker on in your browser, make sure to turn it off when you're going through this step. Otherwise, it won't fire correctly. It's not going to get your pixel data and it's going to be super frustrating. So make sure to turn off your ad blocker and this should all work just fine. So we've loaded this page. We're going to go back to Facebook. And now you can see that a page view has been processed from this landing page. We're going to go back to the landing page. We're going to click play. And once that starts to load through, we'll go back to Facebook and you can see that a view content action has been registered by Facebook as well. Now we get to continue forward in setting up our pixel with Facebook. We have done all the steps. We've created the new pixel. We've created a landing page. It's coming from our custom domain. We've added that pixel to the landing page. And now we've used that landing page that is on our domain to send pixel data back to Facebook. And we've confirmed that Facebook is getting the data. So everything works great up until this point. So now we have to play the waiting game. Now this could take up to 24 to all the way up to 72 hours for this to kind of push through this signal and Facebook to recognize that it's getting signal from this pixel. Now, fortunately, in the case of this video, it only took a couple of hours for this change to come through. And this is what it'll look like. So if we go to the test pixel here, you can see that now we have this new tab for aggregated event measurement. If we go over to the pixel conversion API, you can see that we've got these events that we sent uh, a few hours ago and that they're now showing up in this tab. So if we go over to the aggregated event measurement tab and go to configure web events, we'll go select our, our domain here, select manage events, edit. We'll go to add new event in the top right. And then from the drop down here, you can see that now our test pixel is available. It's not grayed out anymore. So Facebook has confirmed that it's getting signal from this and has applied this signal to your account. And so now from there, we can select the view content event because it has received the view content event from that specific pixel. One key takeaway to know here is that you can only add events that actually come from your pixel first. So if you wanted to add like an add to cart event, you have to actually add to cart an item in your online store so that Facebook gets that data and only then will that event appear for you as an option to use. So I hope this is helpful. I know that this was a confusing step. I didn't know this was going to be an issue when I first published the video, which if you haven't watched that original video on iOS 14, 
I recommend you check that out right here. And as far as timeline is concerned, you probably watched that video, watch the video on Toned In that I recommended earlier, and then come back to this video and everything should work correctly for iOS 14. So the addition of kind of this video is the third installment of this iOS 14 uh, series should give you everything you need to know to update everything and make sure that you're completely ready to go for the iOS 14 change. You're following all the new rules for Facebook, your custom domain works, your landing page works, all that stuff. You'll be able to continue running your ads just like you were before. Now, before I let you go, if you don't subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it if you dig it, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos in the future. And at the end here, I've got the two videos I mentioned in this video on iOS 14 and toned in at the end that you can check out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.